Hi everyone and welcome to my channel, I'm Sayaka and today I'm going to do something a bit different. Usually I take apart virtual computers and consoles, but today I've got my hands on a modern mini PC, the Geekom IT12. Many of you asked which kind of computer I use for gaming, recording, editing or just everyday work, so I thought this would be a great chance to test one on my everyday setup. Okay, let's take a look at what's actually inside the box and we've got the computer which i'll open up later and under this protective layer there are a few more things a thank you card for per casing which is really a nice touch and then of course the user manual with everything you need inside and here's the HDMI cable to connect it to a monitor, the power adapter, and then there is this mount which is very useful if you want to attach the computer on the back of the monitor and save space so you can keep your desk tidy, so you can keep it pretty much everywhere, behind the monitor, next to you, or even between your Jig and Dyson 3 models. It takes up less space than many laptop chargers, perfect if you're short on space or want a quiet system. If your desk is already filled with parts, cables, cartridges and floppy disks like mine is, having a PC that doesn't take up much room is a big plus. And I could also use it for other projects of the channel, for example I could build an arcade cabinet, it's the right size and could be really fun, and since I always open up retro computers I'm sticking to that habit even this time with modern PCs. My videos are based on my personal experience and should not be interpreted as tutorials. Certain repair procedures involve handling internal power supply components, including capacitors that might retain an electric charge. Do not attempt to replicate my actions without the guidance of an expert. As you can see, it's really not hard. And then I need to leave the cover in this way, being careful with the ribbon cable inside this ribbon cable right over here. Inside the layout is clean and well organized. You can see there's the RAM here. Over here we have the USB ports and other inputs and Wi-Fi connectivity is handled by integrated 3D antennas that stay stable even at distance and the cooling system is fully copper and remains quiet even under load. Starting up is simple, just plug in the power and the HDMI cable and within seconds the system is up and running. Windows 11 Pro is already installed, configured and activated, so no need to deal with drivers or extra setup and I immediately begin installing my usual work tools. This system is designed for versatility, so browsing, light editing and even a bit of gaming. When you turn on the computer, you see all the system information right here. There is a system summary and you can see that there is Windows 11 Pro installed and all the details about the processor, but there is also hardware resources, components and the software environment. And since one of my main uses is video editing, I've also installed DaVinci Resolve along with Audacity and OBS. And as you can see, I've already created the project and loaded some of these videos file into the PC. And usually I import the files that I need and they show up in this section. The video clips I want to work with are dragged into the timeline and from there I can edit them however I want. I've already tested rendering on a short clip and it was about 20 seconds long and it took around 8 seconds to render. I also use this computer for basic things like browsing online, watching YouTube and of course I had to try it for gaming too and a few Mistest games felt like the perfect choice so on Patreon I made a video where I test a computer with 7 Mistest games and of course I had to try Doom. One of my all-time favorite MSS games, and honestly, probably a favorite for almost everyone who's ever played it. I love how people keep trying to run it on literally anything, oscilloscope, calculators and even ATMs, it's amazing. Doom has basically become a universal benchmark, 
personally, I'm super slow when I play it because I like to take my time and I always go for 100% kills, collect every item and... Okay, that's enough demos laying for now. Next up, Duke Nukem 3D. This is actually my first time playing it myself, but I remember watching my brother play it all the time when I was a kid. He was seriously obsessed with this game, and I think he still is. I'll mostly end up blowing everything up with pipe bombs just for fun, even if it's totally unnecessary. I remember the first level pretty well, and I think there's a stronger weapon hidden in this wall right here. Switching things up a bit, now it's time for something completely different, Prince of Persia. This one is a classic, way more about timing and precision than running and gunning. I always get a bit stressed playing it, because one wrong move and you're falling into spikes or getting sliced in a half. You don't have second chances. I've played quite a few times, but definitely not as much as Prince of Persia on the PlayStation 2. That was a big part of my childhood. I'm not great at it, I'll be honest. I either overthink the jumps or completely forget the traps. Alright, let's go old school fantasy for a moment. Time for Golden Axe. It's classic beat em up, enemies everywhere, magic explosions, and that strange walking bird. I still don't know what it's called, but I love it when I manage to catch it. I usually pick the Amazon Warrior, though. Being real, half of the time I end up accidentally hitting empty air while trying to combo someone. The game is simple, I'll get surrounded and smashed eventually, but it still feels pretty satisfying. Now, I know some people think racing games are repetitive and boring, but I don't agree at all. For me, it's the opposite. Every time I play, I try to handle the corners better, brake more smoothly, accelerate just right. There's always something to improve and that makes it strangely addictive, so no, not boring at all. And now something a bit different, Jill of the Jungle, that totally feels like one of those random games you'd find pre-installed in some computer and then just get completely hooked on without knowing why. I'm not always sure where I'm supposed to go, and the controls are a bit clunky, especially the jumping. You can pick a sword along the way to fight the enemies, though, to be honest, it's not the most useful weapon. This part is a bit annoying too. You've got the bees constantly chasing you around, and these giant ants that don't seem to care at all if you're swinging a sword at them. Half the time, I feel like I'm just running and hoping they don't touch me. And now we're finishing off with Commander Keen's Secret of the Oracle. I've actually never played this one before, but it's one of those games that seems to come up a lot whenever people talk about classic MS-DOS titles. And I'm pretty sure I've seen this little guy pop up in some old movie scene or maybe in some random memes online. He just has that face you sort of recognize, even if you never played the actual game. Now, I haven't gone in completely blind. I've watched a few gameplay videos over time, so I kinda know what to expect in general. So, jumping around, collecting stuff, shooting weird aliens and dodging traps. It all seems pretty standard. But I wonder what this blue water drop looking things are for. They're pretty much everywhere, but I'm still not convinced they do anything. And gameplay wise, it's not too difficult so far. The only thing giving me a bit of trouble is this bouncing red ball, but honestly, it's a fun one. A bit weird, very colorful, and with that charming early PC vibe. 
And this was the last game for today. I've played this game much longer on Patreon. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see me play them on Twitch, since I do have a channel there, even if I've never used it. And also, I'm using this computer for a couple of days now for basic things too, browsing, email, YouTube and other things, and I'm having no issues. With a 12th gen Intel i7, Iris Exec graphics, 32 gigs of RAM and 1 terabyte PCI 4.0 SSD, the Geekom IT12 is compact, quiet and packed with ports, even an SD card slot. Great for light editing, browsing, streaming and as you can see, even a bit of gaming. As always, I hope you liked this video, let me know in the comments what you think, and thanks again to Geekum for sending me the IT12. If you want to learn more about it, I'll leave a link in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to my Patreon page, and see you in the next video. Bye!